YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back after an interesting day one of the NFL draft. A little slow at first because of the lack of trades and you have some weird and surprising picks overall entertaining. I'm here to break it down. Essentially winners and losers. We got tears for you guys. I will discuss every pick in this video. In our next video, I will grade every single first round pick. We'll have a day two mock. Uh, we'll have day two and three coverage on our Twitter. All kinds of coverage here on YouTube, so join us. Links in the comments that you're looking for. Let's just start with the best picks, the best single picks in my opinion. This is based off value of the pick, so we're not just going to rank the best players here. Value. Uh, so the best picks in the in the first round, Drake May was my number one player in the draft. I think it's a steal at three, even though it was expected. Uh, I think he has a ton of upside, so Patriots, good for them to stay put at three and take uh, the quarterback of the future. The Bears getting Roma Dunes at nine, kind of like Drake May, where it, it was kind of in a way expected, or some people thought he should be gone by that point. But and you get an elite prospect, at least in my opinion, a big time receiver for Caleb Williams and the Bears. You know, Keenan Allen's not going to be there forever. Um, it's just a great value pick for the Chicago Bears. And then Byron Murphy was my number one defensive player in the class. I thought he was going to go earlier than this, even though he was mocked around here, but. Man, this is one of those picks, like, after it happens, you really think about it, and it's like, man, this is a Mike McDonald guy. This D-line is pretty damn strong, what they have up front. Um, so he's going to succeed there for sure. Then Dallas Turner going to the Vikings. They had to trade up a little bit at 17, but big-time pass rusher, my number one pass rusher to pair uh, with Grenard. There was just really no possibility the Vikings were going to land Dallas Turner unless they use that 11th pick on him. So I thought this was really good value. I did not expect that big-time edge rusher, the top edge rusher, to be there at 17. And I didn't, another Alabama guy, I did not expect to be available at 24. The Lions do trade up a little bit, but uh, the Lions get a big-time corner. It feels like a big-time steal. Uh, their biggest need at the same time of being best available, I mean, it's incredible. And then I like Tyler Guyton for the Cowboys. I do factor in that they traded back and still got their guy. They badly needed a draft pick on an extra draft pick on day two. They get that from the Lions. Actually, it was great by both teams. Like firm handshakes, both uh, both sides there. Um, the Cowboy, the ball's on Jerry Jones. You move back, you get your guy. Still, Guyton's been really growing on me recently too. I love the upside. Perfect spot for him to go. Cowboys know their offensive linemen. Those were the very best picks based off value. Let's go on to that next tier. Um, great. Marvin Harrison Jr. is an elite prospect, top receiver in the class. Good job of the Cardinals taking the best one and not trading back. That would have been bad. Um, it, we expected it. You know, they were going to be able to, you know, so it's not like, wow, like, oh, my God, how did they do that? So didn't put that in the best tier because of that. I, it's a great pick. It's a it's elite prospect, best receiver in the class for me. Malik Neighbors. Uh, you know, in between good and great, put it in great because it's a. I mean, the Giants badly, badly needed a, a big time receiver, and they get one of the elites of this draft class, a special player. Um, could argue a Dunze could have helped them a little more. You could, it's debatable. It's deb debatable. Um, it's one of those situations to take either one. You're you're good to go here. Um, glad they didn't. I, I I prefer Neighbors over McCarthy for them for sure as well. Uh, some Giants fans were insisting McCarthy, so but they get a big time player in Neighbors. Uh, Troy Fatanu from Washington was my 13th overall player. He drops down to 20. I said over and over again the latest he'll go is 20. That ends up being the case. I really thought, part of me thought the latest he would go is 19 to the Rams. So yeah, he drops one more spot. There was some concern about his knee. I, I don't know if it's a major concern. I, I, it's a really good left tackle option for the Steelers here. Really, really good value. Um, the corners drop, man. Quinion Mitchell uh, who's my number two corner and a really good player for me, big-time playmaker, drops down to 22. The Eagles were talking about trading up. Who was it for? We'll never know. There was some talk about being Mitchell. I actually thought they would – I was wrong. I thought they would like Terry and Arnold more. Just felt like more of a Roseman-type guy. Um, and he was my number one corner. But they still get a guy I was very high on and a great player that wasn't supposed to be there at 22 at 22. So – incredible value here for the Philadelphia Eagles and they get a upgrade at corner perhaps and then 23 the Jags traded down and got Brian Thomas Jr. they got a number of picks two of the picks were next year but they still get pretty good value because they trade down and get a player I was very high on a good player that can help them they get picks this was almost under the best category um I'm gonna put it under great though it, it you know 
They try to trade up for someone that can replace Calvin Ridley. They end up going Brian Thomas Jr. You know, not really fully a Calvin Ridley player, at least not yet. He's almost a Gabe Davis type player with more speed. And they paid Gabe Davis a lot of money. Of course, I think they'll make both work. They'll figure it out. It's just a little interesting because of that. But overall, great player. You move back, you get picked, and it picks, and you get that really solid player. So I think it's a great uh, overall value pick. Uh, good. Uh, I actually have another tier of good, so the, the next page will not be interesting. It'll be good. Uh, Caleb Williams, it's always tricky with this, with the first overall pick. Like, we expect him to take Caleb Williams. It's not like, wow, yeah, you know, and there are some character concerns, I suppose, with him. I don't know if character is the right word. Um, it, it's the right pick for the Bears at the end of the day. I did love Drake May, but the Bears are trying to turn this thing around right now. They don't want to have to sit there and develop May forever. Overall, it's a good pick. They get an elite prospect. The Bears got a ton better. We'll talk about the Bears again uh, at the end of this video when we talk about the overall winners. Uh, I think J.C. Latham is pretty solid. I'm, I love this one because I got ripped a ton for a lot of things, maybe with mock drafts because, you know, that's kind of what happens anyone that makes mock drafts. But for being too high on J.C. Latham, um, you know, for having around this range or sometimes I had the Titans taking more suggesting the Titans could take him. The Titans fans, let me have it. Let me tell you. So I – I thought this was I like this overall because I think J.C. Latham's a good tackle. I thought it was clear, he was clear cut the second best tackle in the class after Joe Alt. Um, really good fit for Callahan's offense and his dad offensive line. Um, it, it's much more of a scheme fit. People worry about Latham Latham's quickness. I think he moves pretty quick for a size, but the Titans aren't going to be running with this new staff in any outside zone, really, or not a whole lot of it, because that's that's where you really look for speed and quickness. I think it's a good fit. I think it's a good player. It, you know, it's not the sexiest pick in the world. It's not a steal by any means. I think it's just a pretty good pick. The Vikings almost stay put. They trade up one spot. I'm not a big trade up one spot. It's just something I would never do as a GM, um, but they go up one spot. I was a little worried when they did it, they were going to give up something like 23 or something, like something ridiculous. Uh, they didn't do anything close to that, but they're basically free picks for the Jets. Um, but they do get their their guy. Well, I think May was their number one guy, but they do get McCarthy here at 10 without having to trade way up. Overall, that's their quarterback of the future. It's pretty solid for them. Brock Bowers was a surprising pick because like, nobody was mocking the Raiders' Brock Bowers, but I think they probably wanted to trade up for... He actually heard that, well, we knew they wanted to trade up for Jaden Daniels. That just wasn't possible. Um, I actually heard a little bit ago that they tried to trade up for Michael Penix. So that was legit uh, that they wanted him. Um, so Raiders fans may be happy with what happened here because I don't know if a lot of them wanted Michael Penix Jr. But, um, yeah, I mean, they get an elite tight end prospect. Uh, he was supposed to be available around this range, so it's not like eye-popping value-wise. Um how is this going to work with Michael Mayer? You know, Bowers is going to get more snaps, but um, does it take away from Michael Mayer? It's interesting, but they get a really good player overall. They just kind of maybe just too good to pass. And Taliese Fuaga, I think it's a phenomenal fit for the Saints. Um, there was a chance he would have been taken a little right before maybe the Raiders, we thought. Um, you know, maybe not a great fit with the Raiders, but so the Saints kind of, kind of got their guy here. Um, and I preferred him over Fashionu. What if Fashionu was there? What if they have taken him? So they may, maybe they dodged a bullet. I think a really good fit. Uh, you know, really good player. It's just a really good pick. It just it just made a lot of sense for the Saints. So really good pick here. Um, more good. Chop Robinson for the Dolphins. I love Chop Robinson. He, I probably would have put him a tier higher. But again, we kind of expect him to go around here. And... Yeah, it's interesting because the Dolphins have a ton of pass rushers. It is one of the most important positions in football. I know Jalen Phillips, a lot of those guys being injured or you know have, maybe you have durability concerns, and Phillips kind of just coming off that injury. Um, so Robinson could play a, a, maybe a bit right away, uh, even though he's a little bit of a raw prospect. You know, or is he going to get the t snaps taken away from him because the healthy guys are back and ready to go? I, it's an interesting situation there. So how much is he going to play right away? Um, uh, yeah, I kind of wish he w went to a team, you know, because I'm a Robinson fan where he would he'd play a lot more all the time. But um, overall, pretty good value. I'm, I'm a fan of Chop Robinson. I was probably a little higher on him than some of the other people's uh, people's boards compared to them. Uh, then Graham Barton for the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's just overall a good pick. You got your center of the, of the future. Some thought he may not be available here. He was starting to rise up uh, some boards a little bit. He does have to switch positions, so it's interesting. But 
Bucks get a day one starter. It's just a solid pick. It's a solid pick at 26. Darius Robinson, I like Robinson. You know, if he had a little more speed, closing speed, um, you know, with his pass rush, I, he'd probably be a top 10 player, actually, because the traits, the power, I mean, how well he uses his length, the versatility, it's, it's eye-popping stuff. Um, he, he has some flashy, like, really good things to his game and a lot of upside. It's just really lacking that closing speed, so that bumps him down a little bit, but... Overall, I like Robinson around this range, a solid pick, and I think maybe a little deeper in that. I, I think, you know, Jonathan Gannon, I think now this is a pick that kind of gets you saying, all right, now Jonathan Gannon can kind of run his defense. You know, last year he didn't didn't really feel like the same. And, you know, we weren't expecting it to be the Eagles defense, but didn't really feel like the same, like the way it was, like the way he ran it. Um, he couldn't really fully run his style defense because he didn't have his style of players yet. And I think, you know, physical defensive end that can move around a bit. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, could, he could be like his Brandon Graham, but also like a Milton Williams guy at times. So I, I think it's a, it's a Jonathan Gannon type of guy here. And then Xavier Worthy, uh, you know, this is a pick that once it was made, I was like, maybe I should have kept Worthy up higher on my board where I once had him. And I mean, when I dropped him down a little bit, then mainly moving other guys up because you know, he's going to be damn good with the chiefs. It's going to work out. They did trade up a little bit for him. Um, but it was down at 28, you know, close to the second round overall. I, I view it as good. He's going to be a really good player for the chiefs. It's just one of those situations where you're like, all right, I kind of wish I had him iron on his board. That's just the chiefs factor. Just how good Patrick Mahomes and the chiefs, Andy Reid, how good the chiefs are. So, um, a compliment to them, the two, two in a row, uh, Super Bowl, the back-to-back -back champions, I should say interesting picks, which I can't stress this enough. Interesting does not mean bad. I could see some people taking it that way for some reason. Uh, Jaden Daniels, second overall. I would have preferred Drake May. Jaden Daniels is still a hell of a player. Uh, maybe a little better than Drake May week one. Uh, and the commanders are, are a little focused on. It's interesting. You know, interesting is the is the, is the the label of this year. I think it's interesting because they, they might be more worried about winning right away than developing a guy like Drake May. Uh, just because Dan Quinn, a little older, wanting to win right now. They may replace him because he wasn't really their first choice. If... Um, you know, things aren't going great in the first couple of years. Cliff Kingsbury, um, kind of same situation. Uh, I think these guys aren't on the longest of leash even going in. Um, so they want to win right away. So I think that's why it's an interesting pick. You see, Joe All, I like. I like Joe All. Uh, elite grade, top tackle. His upside is through the roof. So the Chargers got a complete, really good offensive line. You know, so I'm, I think it's an all right pick. Like, it's a pretty good pick. But... At the same time, it's, it's it's a little interesting passing on, and we knew it might happen, but a little interesting passing on those big-time receivers. Because the offensive line, I think, is already pretty good. I think but with better coaching, it could even be even, could be even better, and they have better coaching now. Like That's a huge difference in coaching, I think, and especially with the offensive line. Um, just really just missing one piece, and they got it with all. But receiver, and I'm not all about need. You guys know that. I'm not about just take the biggest need. But receiver is not only the biggest need, but it was the best available player, even though Alt wasn't far, far off. But whether it's Neighbors or Adunze, uh, man, I really would have liked Neighbors for them specifically. I just would have helped. It would have helped Justin Herbert at that next level, you know. Because he's a guy that can escape pressure. He's a guy that can throw under pressure. Uh, need those big time receivers. The receivers let him down with injuries and drops last year. So, and then Liatu Latu is a really good pass rusher. He's the most polished day one. Um, you know, I thought Turner had a lot more upside, and you kind of can debate who will be the better one day one. But, yeah, a lot to a really good player is my point. It's just interesting. I, you know, and we knew most teams weren't as concerned about his neck injury and the being, you know, having to medically retire in the past. But it was, it, we knew it was a big risk. I talked about it over and over again. Uh, and the Colts were on the clock, and they let it wind way down. So I really think they were looking to trade back and maybe still get lot to because they knew they could because a lot of teams scratched them off their board because the the flags. And then Schefter kind of came on and said that like several teams took them completely off the board because they were concerned about the injuries. So um, it's an interesting one. Like it's a good player. He was around this range sort of on my board, um, really polished, a finesse type pass rusher and – I thought the Colts actually needed a pass rush. I wasn't really sure if they are going to pay attention to that. So overall, it's kind of interesting. It's risky. It's really risky. Marius Mims, 
Super high upside. He's got the traits. Tremendous upside. Uh, I think it's a good fit blocking scheme wise. What I didn't like about Mims is, you know, he's a little raw um, injuries, I guess. But what I didn't like on tape is he wasn't really great out in space yet. And especially with his timing, that's usually more like an outside zone scheme. The Bengals really don't run that. A lot of inside zone and gap uh, for them. So it's a good fit. It kind of helps with his strengths and weaknesses. I do, you know, he was injured during the year. He's got limited experience. He got injured at the combine. So I started moving him down my board. Um, So it's a little early, but then you factor in fit. Upside, I, he gets to learn at right tackle behind Trent Brown. Uh, I, I, you know, so it's a it's a pretty good situation, I suppose. Jared Verse was an interesting one, just not one I expected the Rams to make, uh, picked up for them to make because I, you know, it fit. You know, they're always like a three in it, and I am more about you know forget the scheme, just get the best players. But um, they're more of a three four. They like the speed, stand up rushers, and I'm not putting a pass verse to be able to do that but he just felt like a physical 4-3 and i could they move him around a little bit could they be a multiple scheme going forward they don't have raheem morris anymore um so we'll see because he has the physicality in the, in the run defense to maybe play a 3-4 end spot but i don't know if he had completely has the power for that um I, i'd say he's gonna play off the edge and he, you know probably stand up a little bit more than he did um at florida state even even though he did it it's just a little bit of a surprising pick i wasn't a, some people were really high in verse i wasn't a huge verse guy but this you know not saying it's a reach um he's a little tight lacking a little flexibility um you know but the rams get a pass pass rush presence here um more interesting picks i was about to put jordan morgan under questionable when that happened and when i was making this video uh because i really didn't think they needed a tackle i like their young tackle duo I guess nothing is like for sure set. Like what if like, cause nothing's like a hundred percent proven yet. So like what if, but I really didn't think they needed a tackle. Um, this was a little bit surprising of a pick here. And then the question is, could they, could they move him to guard because he's lacking length that tackle, but you know, he's lacking strength for guard. And I think he's just a really good pass protecting tackle. So uh, I was about to put it in questionable, but Packers no offensive line. They can surely coach and develop offensive line, and and it's pr probably an upgrade at left tackle here. Because in, in Packers are pretty balanced at running and passing the football, but Jordan Love is their prized possession. They want to protect him in the passing game, and and Morgan could. I think it's a good fit to protect Jordan Love, and people think he has some upside at guard. So if you need to slide him inside, they can do that. So bumped it up a tier. I was surprised about that one, though. I was surprised. Nate Wiggins, overall, good corner. Right around the range he should go. Um, I actually had him 30th overall player in the draft. So right around the range he should go. There is some risk because when you're undersized, like thin, like weight-wise, and you have past injuries and even an injury at the combine, those things pairing together, oh, they're making it a little, they make it pretty risky. And then does he have the physicality to press? He didn't press a whole lot, even though he ran a lot of man off-man coverage. Um, so it was a little risky, uh, but overall a good player with a lot of upside, freakish speed, playmaking ability. Um, Ravens definitely wanted one of those offensive linemen. They all came off the board before them, and they couldn't afford to trade up because they need their picks uh, because they lost a lot and you know they didn't really sign a ton. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this was their A-plus plan, uh, and we weren't expecting corner, but um, you get a solid player. Niners taking Ricky Pearsall, and this was uh, one of the bigger shockers too. Two reasons not a lot of people expected a receiver, and then Ricky Pearsall was a, a like a fan favorite. A lot of people liked it, like him. We know he's going to be a good receiver. Um, he was just kind of firm in the second. Like Sometimes you would see some of these, some of these second-round receivers get mocked in the first. Like could be a surprise. You never really saw this one, though, even though everyone liked him. So it was a shocker. And then another reason, you know, could this mean they're trading – a receiver, people lean towards Ayuk. Hearing Debo actually could be a little more likely than the extent in Ayuk. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what I heard before recording this. Um, but I don't know. The more I sit uh, sit on this one, I like, think about it. Uh, like you know, it's not a, nowhere near a great pick, but it's definitely interesting. And it, you know, it's interesting because Ricky Pearsall is, is a slot receiver. That's where he does his damage. In the Niners, you notice something about Ayuk and Debo. Neither of them really have a ton of reps from the slot. Different receivers, but neither have a ton of reps in the slot. So are the Niners like adding something they to their game 
to kind of be a little more unique, kind of, you know, just, you know, stop being a little predictable, get over that hump in the playoffs. So they get a, like a legit slot receiver, like a legit slot receiver. I, I give him Adam Thielen comparisons. Um, you know, so something new for the Niners here, something different. And they talk about, he wasn't mocked here. He's a second round player. Well, they're at pick 31. We're almost in the second. We can't really penalize taking second round players there too much. Uh, and then the Panthers trade up one spot uh, to get in the first round, take Xavier Leggett. It was pretty obvious they liked Xavier Leggett, how much they, they – I kept mocking him 33rd, uh, how much they liked him. It was quite obvious. Um, again, the two one-spot trade-ups were interesting because I'm, I'm, if I'm a GM, I'm just not trading up one spot. I take the gamble if the guy's there or not. But, I mean, you do go up one spot. And you get a fifth year option here, so I guess there's a positive. Like at least you go up and you and they only swap picks like a little later. Um, so Bills had an interesting day, uh, but yeah, the Panther, you know, like it early second round guy. You get him 32. They did trade up a spot. They get the fifth year option, uh, and, and they get an outside physical receiver they can have some fun with, do some gadget things with as well. Um, you know, because they have a couple guys that can play in the slot already too. So. Um, yeah, it's really not that surprising uh, on that one. And the questionable picks, and um, I do want to make it clear that I don't, and the grades will come out tomorrow. Fashion new pick is, re- it's hard. I put them in the same tier, just how it ended up being, but I, I don't, they're not the same. Fashion new and the quarterback picks, the Jets, the positive, for there's positives for the Jets. And I'm not saying, you know, questionable is not necessarily bad either. Um, positive for the Jets is they basically got free picks by moving down one. Love that. Free picks? Really, it was free picks moving down one spot. Love that. Um, that really has nothing to do with the pick itself. Not a big Alu Fashion guy like most people are. So if you want to be optimistic, go watch other people. They're probably going to love that. Um, I think he's a first-round player. I think he's a little raw. He's got upside. Um, I don't love his movement. I, I, I think he's a little clunky, a little slow. Small hands is, is a small you know, negative here. Um, kind of going back to the positives, like he does need to sit and learn, I think. I think he's a little raw. And I to be, being behind a guy like Tyrone Smith is pretty big for him. So that's great. Sit there and learn. Um, you know, the Jets haven't had their best of luck with drafting linemen like this. And it's also a guy that I, I did not love around 11. So <clears throat> do those things go together there? But he has some upside, good situation. Maybe he has to get thrown in there because of injury early on. I, you know, I liked, I think they would have taken Latham if he was there. Um, I really think so. He's a better version of fashion. New, but does play the other side, <clears throat> but they could have used either side. Uh, I just a little more surprised they didn't go with um, one of the other offensive linemen that I thought were better, and they they didn't go too far behind this. Were those guys I thought were better tackles, but they also could probably probably play guard at a high level, so they could sit and learn tackle from behind behind Tyrone Smith and Morgan Moses if they had to fill in for one of those guys because of injury they can, but they could fill in for Elijah Vera Tucker if he continues as if continues to have dur- durability issues. Um, you don't draft the guy just because of the versatility, but I also thought that like, obviously the Jets didn't think so, but I thought those guys were better prospects as well. Like Fuaga being one of them. So I don't love the pick. They did get free picks and you, and you got a guy with some potential here, but the shockers of the day, the Falcons took Michael Penix jr. And it's a guy with a lot of arm talent. Um, you know, a lot of arm talent. He's talented, went to the national championship, uh, you know, he's a little up there in age for a rookie though. And he has a long history of durability issues. And that system for Washington is a lot different than coming to the NFL. Um, you know, he was a lot better there and he was good at Indiana, but last time we saw him in Indiana, I was like, eh. um, and then you have Bo Nix who I don't, I don't think was anywhere near worth the 12th pick. It was just Sean Payton going, I got to get a guy that that's kind of my mold of quarterback. He kind of looks like Drew Brees looks like. Ian Book, who Sean Payton drafted in New Orleans as well. Um, so, um, and the run on quarterback scared him a little bit of a panic pick. Just no one thought he was anywhere worthy of this pick. So, reach. So, Knicks, Penix, I was higher on Penix. I think he's just a better quarterback. Knicks feels like more of a reach. But 
you factor in the situations. The Broncos were desperate for a quarterback. The Falcons just paid $100 million, $180 million to Kirk Cousins. Value the quarterback as high as you possibly could value it. And then, then they valued it taking quarterback at eighth overall. They valued quarterback more than anyone's ever done it. Um, so they don't get a pick that helps you right now. Um, helps you with that playoff push, like a deeper playoff push, maybe more. Um, they get an older prospect that's going to sit behind. Kirk. It's just, it's questionable because one, how much they they value quarterback too much. If that, I didn't think that was possible. They did. They didn't help themselves now. But the main thing is like, what is their goal here? Like, what is their best case scenario? Like, their best case scenario is Kirk Cousins is worth that contract they gave him. Like, that's first off. But that would mean Michael Penix doesn't play for a long time, and then he's an old he's an older prospect already, so he's a little up there in age for a first time starter when he comes back in. Like if they want this pick to be worth it, I think he's in sooner than that and healthy. But that would mean the Kirk Cousins thing didn't work out. Like ah, uh, like it's it's crazy, it's crazy. And I know the Falcons fans can't be super happy about it, but um. Interesting stuff, but we will, again, fashion news, way less questionable than the other two. I, I just just really wasn't in love with it. Uh, on to the ultimate winners. I went ahead and decided, uh, number one, the Lions, Brad Holmes, these guys keep doing it. They keep doing it. Usually I don't give out this big of winners to guy, teams that traded up, so I liked a lot of trade-ups here, it looks like, well, a couple at least. Uh, but the Lions get a massive, massive steal in my number one corner, Tyrion Arnold, who can do a bit of everything, a versatile in multiple ways. He's going to play outside for them for sure. Uh, but coverage-wise, press-off-wise, number one corner, absolute steal. Also their biggest need. They, they, they get a big steal, the best player on the board at the time, uh, massive value, also fill their massive, most you know biggest need, uh, they hopped the Packers, who I think, who knows, but could have taken them. And Lions and the Packers are heavyweights in the NFC for this year. I actually did a, did predictions not that long ago. I had them both going to the NFC Championship game. This is actually a pick. I was thinking, I said it in the live stream. It could make the difference there. It, it could actually make the difference. Crazy, crazy. So the Lions win. Not really a surprise what they do. I still don't love the Jack Campbell pick last year, even though he can turn out. But everything else, great. Um, Bears and Vikings got to shout them out for the haul. Maybe most improved. Caleb Williams for the Bears. They didn't have a quarterback, and they had Justin Fields. But it's an upgrade, but they didn't have him late recently, so we have to factor off that. They had a big-time receiver in Roma Dunze. Great value. The Vikings add J.J. McCarthy, so they get their quarterback. And Dallas Turner, I still can't get over. They get the best pass rusher all the way down there. The Vikings are a weird one to break down to evaluate here because they trade up one spot, which I don't. I don't do if I'm a GM. I don't love it. Um, doesn't mean I absolutely like if teams don't do exactly what I would do. You know, I never really flunk them or anything close because just because of that. If I don't love the pick on top of it, then maybe. Um, but they, yeah, it's, the Vikings are weird because they give up value with both their picks. They trade up a lot of value, but at the same time, yeah, they get a haul. But like, think about it. They they were like there was a most people thought they were going to get JJ McCarthy while not being able to have twenty third overall pick. They keep that pick. I thought they were going to be able to keep and get JJ McCarthy, but they keep that pick and they get Dallas Turner. There was like not supposed to be any scenario where they get Dallas Turner, unless they use an eleven on him. But they get McCarthy and Dallas Turner. And yes, they gave up value. They traded up, but they didn't trade it. You know any of those picks away. They didn't have any day two picks going into this, so they were able to maneuver without their day two picks today going into it. So it's it's weird what the Vikings what happened here. But this wasn't supposed to happen for them. Like if they didn't give up the value, like if they would have stayed put at eleven and got McCarthy or yeah McCarthy, which I actually think they could have. I don't think they were going to stay put at 23 and get uh, Turner. But if they were to, if they did, they won this draft. They maybe it was the best draft in terms of value of all time. But because they gave up some value and I don't love one spot trade ups, I think they could have stayed put. Um, 
it bumps them down a little bit. But they they got play. They weren't supposed to get a collect those paired of player. Like it's crazy how that happened. I'd say best move and with some good value, the Cowboys. Uh, I mean, the ball's on Jerry Jones. The ball's on Jerry. Guyton was a guy that was really growing on me this last week or so. I think he has tremendous upside. I think him and Mims are like the same style player. I like Guyton better, better durability. I think he's better in space. I think he's a really good fit with the Cowboys who knew no offensive line. It was their guy. And they were on the board. I'm like, man, they're trading back. And the Chiefs traded ahead of them. They didn't take them. It, the Cowboys almost got like an F from me. I didn't do the grades yet, but like trading back. Okay, good if you get your guy and then you blew it. You had your chance to get your guy. The team took, but no, the team didn't take. So they they had the balls on Jerry Jones. They go back. They badly need more picks again, or because they didn't sign guys in free agency because they couldn't, and they lost some guys. So they go back, get a big time pick for day, for day two, and they still get their guy, which I think is good value. Guyton was really growing on me. Good fit. I love I love that. I love what the when the ballsy moves work work out. Patriots got my best overall player. Again, can't stress it enough. I don't think Drake May will be the best year one. I don't, I'm don't. i not really expecting him to win rookie of the year. I think he could. I think he's got the most upside. I think he's a special player. Um, I hope the Patriots get a little more talent around him. Hopefully the coaching staff works out because I'm banking on that. Uh, and then I got to shout out the Seahawks. They got my number one defensive player. That D-line's pretty damn nasty. It's a Mike McDonald D-line there. So that's actually kind of in order. Lions, the NFC North, I just realized it. Lions, Bears, Vikings. Cowboys. The more I talk about that Cowboys situation, I love it. It's just Tyler Guyton might not look like the sexiest thing in the world. Like, I think if we're talking about sexy, I think yeah, the Bears and the Vikings. Uh, Kayla Williams, Roman Dunze, mainly, and then JJ McCarthy and Dallas Turner. Um, like those are flat. Like, it's not always about who got the best haul though. Those teams picked twice, not everyone did. That's that's kind of why I lean with the Lions there, but. Yeah, the Vikings one's a tough one to evaluate because they gave up value. Again, don't love that tra- one-spot tra- trade-up, but, like, how did they maneuver that? Like, how did they end up with those players? Um, NFC North's going to be really good. It's definitely the Lions and the Packers still. Um, and the Bears might be third, the Vikings might be fourth, but that, that's an insane division. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, I'm going to sleep on these things because it's, what is it? I'm Central Time, 1.15 a.m. at this moment, and I'm going to grade tomorrow morning the uh, first-round picks. And I remember last year when I woke up, like specifically the Dalton Kincaid and the Bills, that grew on me a little more. So things could slightly change. Just think about fits, how things are going to work, how it could be unique, interesting stuff. That's part of my favorite part here. And then we will get into the Day 2 mock. We'll talk about best available players. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, at NFL. Link pinned in the comments. It's very important for Day 2 and 3. We'll have more videos throughout the way, though, as well. So if you join us, turn notifications on. Check out our sponsors, Liquid IV, GLD Shop. Uh, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.